on Thursday was a classic example of how weak officiating can lead to violence. Game seven minutes away, its tone depends to a large extent on the work of a Canadian referee. Game 7 of the Canada-Soviet Series, live from Moscow. Brought to you by the Toronto Dominion Bank, the bank where people make the difference. By Gulf Oil Canada Limited, its dealers, agents, and distributors across Canada. By Carling O'Keefe, brewers of O'Keefe Ale and Old Vienna Lager Beer. again everybody back at Luziki Stadium here in Moscow as we wait the arrival of the officials and the teams for tonight's game and we place a little more emphasis on the arrival of the officials tonight because it plays such an important role in the game uh, two nights ago which caused such a ruckus and a riot and has been the focal point of discussion not only here in Moscow but across Europe and of course back home in Canada as well as the players come out side by side as with the international theme in the background, they get ready to start game number seven here in Moscow. The Soviets winning the last two, four to two, and five to two. The last one winding up with the Donnie Brooks. Uh, Rick Lee throwing punches at, uh, at uh, Harlamov uh, amongst the number of incidents that took place and uh, all seems to be peaceful and quiet as we get ready to start game number seven. Johnny, when they paraded on the ice, Rick Lee and Harmonov walked side by side right through the hallway talking to each other, and they talked to each other as they skated on. It's great companionship. At practice this morning, as a matter of fact, they met and they shook hands, and they said, well, let's get back on with the hockey game. Now we're getting ready to meet the Canadian players, and first of all is goalkeeper Jerry Cheevers, who was just sensational the other night. The backup goalie tonight is Gilles Gretton from the Toronto Toros. Ricky Lee, number two, and the whistles, of course, indicate the displeasure of the Soviet fans for the fact that he is back in the lineup. J.C. Trombley, the veteran defenseman from the Quebec. Nordique, who has been just superb throughout the entire series. Captain Pat Stapleton, number 12 of the Chicago Cougars, who has been equally as effective. Number 17, Rick Smith, who has been teaming up with defense mate Paul Schmier, and Schmier has been one of the unsung players of the series. Getting into action now for the first time in Moscow is number 24, Al Hamilton of the Everton Oilers, and Jean Rule, number five, one of the luckiest men on this club who worked those corners so well with Andre Lacroix number seven and we could see a couple of changes in order tonight. Number eight Tom Webster real hustler in the corner is back in the lineup and they've introduced Gordy Howe number nine so they were going to hold Gordy back but they're going in numeric order apparently so Gordy Howe is introduced and feel kind of lonesome over there. Young son Mark and the uh, and to be introduced, followed by number 14, Ralph Backstrom, the two-way plugger who's been having a tough job in center trying to throw those scoring passes. And back into action is Edmonton's Jim Harrison, number 15. Bobby Hall, number 16, gets the next introduction. There was a question of whether or not uh, Paul Henderson would be playing. He has a sore knee, but he felt that he would give it a try anyway. Number 21, Serge Bernier, Quebec, the real hard luck guy of the uh, series so far, as far as scoring is concerned. Number 22, Mark Cardiff. Back to Johnny McKenzie. Gets a round of applause from the Canadian fans and, of course, from some of the Soviet fans here as well. 
might point out that the referee tonight is from Canada, Tom Brown from Toronto. Number one, Sidel Nikov, the backup goalkeeper who has failed the action so far in the series. Number two is Alexander Kusev. Number three is Vladimir Lushenko, a 24-year-old defenseman. Number six is Siliev, who is probably the most effective defenseman they have. He did more things. Number seven is Zygenka with a good shot and a real rough defenseman. Number eight is Sergei Kapustin, a young hockey player who's playing with a broken finger but has scored goals from anywhere on the ice. Yuri Lebedev, number 11, another youngster with great potential. Yuri Lebedev. They said he wouldn't play last game that he played, but he was gimpy. He's playing again tonight. Number 16, the great center, Vladimir Petrov. Arlovov. They said he wouldn't play today either, but he's out there. And he's played with broken bones and, and a sore, sore head, but he's playing tonight. Number 18 is uh, Rikulov, who's a uh, versatile man because he'll play any of the defense or forward spots. Number 19, Shadri, the big tough centerman. Number 20, Kretschak, one of the outstanding goalkeepers in hockey anywhere. Number 21 is Shatilov, who had an outstanding game last game, his first time out. Number 22 is uh, Neeson. Number 24 is Vodinov, and Neeson's teammate. He's come out of the university team three years ago. And uh, number 29 is Sergei Kotov playing for the first time in this half of the series. And number 32, we have Yuri Churin. Coach Boris Kalagin, the quiet spoken coach of the Soviet team, as you saw in the background. We're now getting ready for the national anthems. And then I wouldn't be surprised to see the Canadians skate over to the Canadian end and be greeted by that great Canadian cheering section. See, they can't both put it all together for a big night. But now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthems of the two countries.
So with the playing of the national anthems, the traditional exchange of gifts as the players shake hands at center ice and exchange the pins and the pennants. And uh, as is usually the case in Canada, the, at least in Europe, the collection of pins is something that uh, really becomes quite a fantastic thing because players collect them and fans collect them and they have them all over their bodies. They must have hundreds and hundreds of them and uh, <laughs> it just becomes quite a competition amongst them. There go the Canadian players in their warm-up down at their end and some of them are waving to the Canadian fans who chant that go Canada go, go Canada go and uh, this is game seven of the Canada Soviet series for Moscow. Maxie, that picture really brings back memories. Did you ever play hockey outdoors when you were a kid? Yeah, and I played golf at the Barber College, too. You remember what it was like? Speed freezing. Build your own rink. Don't shoot the fuck into the corners, because you'll lose it in the snow. The best player on our street was a girl. She was the biggest player, too. <laughs> hockey sure has changed. And Sport O'Keefe is happy to be participating in this great Russia-Canada series. Enjoy the game. to go now with game number seven. It'll be the referee, Tom Brown from Toronto, Sergi Gushin from Moscow, and Jim LeBlanc from Hamilton, Ontario. In goal, Jerry Cheevers for Canada. Pat Stapleton will be out there on, on defense, and he is uh, teaming up with Al Hamilton, number 24, from the Edmonton Oilers. The French connection with Bernier Center, who will on the right side tied up on the left wing. Petrov, Harlamov, and Mihailov, the forward line for the Soviets as Canada gets underway, firing the puck down to the Soviet blue line. Serge Bernier, back to Al Hamilton. Hamilton, who has been very anxious to get into this series, carries that puck inside Soviet territory and then hustles back to his position. Back come the Soviets, led by Gusev, down the side. Mihailov stopped at the line. It's called offside as it was in over the Canadian blue line. There were some uh, number of meetings between coaches and players on both sides yesterday and today. Bernier and Petrov for the faceoff, a bouncing puck at center taken by Stapleton going in over the line. Putting that pass off to the corner, and he did not see it coming. That was uh, Tardif. Tardif has it in front of the net. Now it's back out in front again with Tardif and Stapleton trying to keep it in. It's at the line and cleared out as Rajon Houl comes back to the line with it. He pulls it away, gets away from Mihailov, the pass to Stapleton, over on the right side. Drop pass here now for Bernier. And here it's back to the blue line, Al Hamilton. Hamilton shoots, they try to jam at it, they bang it, another shot. And the goalkeeper kicked it them and out, and a defenseman finally cleared it away. Back comes Mihailov going in over the line. Gets the pass across over on the wing to Petrov. It's kicked out by Cheevers. Harlamov inside the Canadian zone, stopped by Bernier. Bernier puts it out at center ice, and they'll be changing players on this move. Back is Al Hamilton at the line. Hamilton up to center ice, all by himself. A dump pass to hit the skate, and it's knocked into the air by Andre Lacroix. And uh, Lacroix is playing out there with Bobby Hall and Tom Webster. Andre Lacroix with Tom Webster on right wing in place of Johnny McKenzie. Bobby Hull on left wing. The pass comes back to J.C. Trombley at the line. Trombley to Lacroix, and Lacroix loses it. Lacroix has had trouble getting started. Forward pass intended for Lacroix. Goes deep into Soviet territory. Fires it around the board, and Yakushev is back after it. Yakushev misses the check by Webster. It's out to the center. There's a break down the right side. Here goes Lebedev. Lebedev takes the shot, passes it across to Shadrin, and Shadrin is taken out of the play by Bobby Hull. Now it's inside the Canadian zone, right out in front of the net. And a great save there by Jerry Cheevers as Yakusha was left wide open. That's the first good scoring chance that the Soviets have had, and uh, Lebedev laid it right on Yakusha's stick, and Cheevers watched him come up with the big save here. This got down in time, otherwise it would have went under, Cutty. 
Well, it's back to the blue line and Gates again. Goff shoots and that's wide on the net. Over to Lebedev. Lebedev is stopped by Bobby Hall. Now Hall tries to wind up inside his own zone. Shadreen is shadowing him. Pass over to Webster. Webster has trouble. Now Ricky Lee takes a look, decides he'll carry it out. Looking for somebody at center. There's the pass to LaCroix, but he put it into his skates. And they've been doing that all too often. Here comes Lebedev with Yakushev in front. Pass was sliding across. In the corner now, it's Ricky Lee. Ricky Lee behind the Canadian net. Drops a pass for J.C. Trombley. And Trombley, a good stick handler, ahead to Webster. Webster to Hull. Hull has his hit his stick and goes up into the crowd. Oh, well, the first two shifts, the Russians haven't uh, shown us that great forechecking that time and time again has put the Canadian club in trouble. We've had pretty good puck control down there, but mainly because the Russians are just sending one man in. Now, if we come from behind the play out of our blue line, anything can happen. Now the play is with the Howe line out, and it's Luchenko. Puck is batted. It's knocked down as Mark Howe, number 11, turns inside his own zone, a rink-wide pass. Up to center ice right to Backstrom. Backstrom lost control of it and then has to let it slide to the board. Mark Howe as Gordy Howe knocks down Anison. Gordy Howe reaching for a pass too far. Mark Howe knocks it back. Let's break away. Backstrom goes in. He shoots. Oh, what a great save. Gordy Howe hits the goal post. Backstrom on a great shot. And then Gordy Howe came in and hit the goal post. Lachenko at center. At the line. Meltsev is hit by Gordy Howe, who takes the puck away from him. Here's a bouncing puck back to the blue line to Luchenko. Luchenko's shot is deflected in front of the net. Here's an easy shooting score! Watch the puck being given back by the Canadian defenseman right out. Get a dump in the puck in the corner. They slam it right back out through the middle. Watch this. We've got it. Put set him in the corner, shoot it out through the middle. The Russian defenseman is there and lets it go. A screen shot goes in. But I don't know how Gordy Howe missed that great scoring opportunity he had. Backstrom went in on Trichik. The Soviets won, and Canada is a game seven from Moscow. Even if I trained until 1976, there's no way I'd make it into this Olympic Stadium in Montreal. I'm just too old. But hundreds of young Canadian athletes will be here with the help from the O'Keefe Sports Foundation. They're helping our kids prepare to meet and possibly beat the best in the world. You know, the O'Keefe Sports Foundation assists more than 35 amateur sports groups. Hey, is that any way to run a brewery? Shoot, bet it is. Now the Soviets have opened the scoring in every game here in Moscow, and they've jumped in front one to nothing. Al Hamilton's long pass goes into the corner. Paul Henderson racing in after it with Jimmy Harrison. Harrison turning, trying to put it back in front, but that's into a pair of skates, and Al Hamilton has to come back for it. After Canadians missed two great opportunities, the Russians come bouncing right back and score. This time it's Sergei Kapustin at center right. Kapustin pass to Kutov to Vasiliev. Vasiliev shoots and that's high. Comes back on the wing to Kutov. Kutov puts it in front. They shoot it. And Kapustin's shot was blocked by Al Hamilton. Now it's Hamilton taking him into the corner. They're loose in front of the net. The puck is loose. And it's taken off to the side as Al Hamilton has it ahead to Johnny McKenzie. But it doesn't get through. And Jerry Cheevers clears. One nothing hockey game as Whitey Stapleton comes out for Canada to his own blue line at center right. Makes a shot, goes to pass too far, intended for Paul Henderson. Henderson right in front to shoot. Oh, and a great save as Harrison was robbed by Trechak at point blank range. A long shot is wide. Goes over on the wing to Harlamov. Harlamov is bumped, and Whitey Stapleton comes up with the puck. Ahead at center ice to Bernier too far. This time is taken by a Rajon Houle. Houle bounces it off the board, gets his own rebound. He stick handles his way through with Bernier. But Bernier has to wait because Houle would have been offside. Now it's inside the Canadian zone offside. That's usually the way it happens, Howie. You get two great chances and then all of a sudden, bang, back comes the loose one in the tip. Well, watch Henderson throw it out to Harris and look at here. And he makes a good try. Look at the left leg of Trecek, twice in a row. He just made a fantastic save moment to go off Backstrom, this time off Harrison. That guy's <laughs> Rob 
from this place. <laughs> okay, it's Mark Carter. Back to J.C. Trombley. Around the corner. And it's uh, Ricky Lee. Trying to bring it out from behind his own net. Stick handling up to his own line. Rushing up there quickly. He fires it as he gets in over that red line. The puck goes around the back of the net. It's held back in there now by Bernier. Bernier tries to put it out in front. But the Russian player falls on the puck. And he knocks Tardif right back into the pile. That was Shatilov. But uh, the whistle blows and they'll have a face off in the Soviet zone to the left. Billy Howard said that he had planned no special strategy. He just felt that with uh, the officiating crew tonight, with two Canadians out there, they would at least get an even break in the officiating and that the Canadians would be able to maintain their cool. Harlamov stopped by Tardif. Tardif puts it back out in front. Taken by Harlamov. Carrying down that left wing, this great stick handler at the line. A drop pass for Petrov. And his shot is wide. The Russians keep it inside the Canadian zone. It's J.C. Trombley pulling it down, then losing his balance. Petrov gets up with it. Puts it out in front and taken by Houle. Houle with Bernier. Bernier with Tardif on the right wing. Here's a drop pass for Tardif, and he's called offside. Johnny, I think the Canadians are finally, when they go to the attack, playing wide against the board. And this, the Russians are picking up the wing. And this is leaving so much room in center ice. All the good scoring chances we've had have come from center ice because the wings are locked way outside. Russians certainly haven't taken advantage of that extra 12 feet in width. We have not, but as Howie points out, hopefully starting to. Racing in here goes Lebedev. Lebedev's shot is blocked as uh, Schmier fell in front of it, but here's the play right in front. They jam at it and shoot it wide with Cheevers out of the net. Back comes Canada, led down the right side by Tom Webster, and Webster was partially hit by number three, Lushenko. Puts it right out in front, puts it out again. It's loose in the goal free. And Bobby Hull couldn't get his stick on it. It's uh, deflected out to the line. Right out by Shadreen. Shadreen's long pass slides too far, and Schmier is back in after it. Schmier around the Canadian net. Hits Yakushev. Puck bounces loose. At the side of the goal, put it right out of front. Here he is. Good to score! Jordan was left wide open. Well, you can feel that goal coming. Watch this pass. Just a great pass. Nobody out of the point, and Curran just a moment before had that same opportunity to shoot from the same spot, but give it to Shadrine, and he missed. Too many Canadians in the corner chasing the Russian players. Nobody out of the point. There's a great big open area, and the Russian defensemen are just smart enough to move into it. Just a great shot and a great all-round passing play. Curran from Lebedev, and the Soviets are now on top, two to nothing. Here comes Ralph Backstrom stick handling up the Russian line. He can't get through. Play comes back out to center to Whitey Stapleton. Stapleton hit by his own player. Then Gordy Howe falls over top of him. Shut in from Lebedev at 13-13 in the first period. Pass over on the side to Gusev. Gusev shoots off the glove of the goalkeeper, Jerry Cheever. Head now to Mark Howe. Howe down the left wing. Stick handling at the blue line. And it's knocked off his stick. Back out to the line comes Anison, number 22. Anison, he shoots, and that goes off the leg of Al Hamilton. Hamilton goes down as Anison gave him a beautiful fake. Now it's Mark Howe. Ahead to Backstrom, intended for Backstrom. It goes too far. It'll go all the way and will be called back for icing. Johnny, perhaps a sign of the times, you'll notice when the Russian forwards, their attackers are sort of waltzing through center right. They just sent that Gusev shooting down the wing, and he had a great shot. The thing is, the puck, here it comes back here. Here's the goal again from another angle. Hey, a good shot, hey, all the way. But Gusev come back so fast, he caught Powell at the blue line. They rarely fly in this afternoon. So it is a uh, two to nothing hockey game. The Soviets leading, trying to set up Bob uh, Gordy Howe. Howe over to Mark Howe at the blue line. He shoots, bounces off the glove of Trechak. Mark Howe's got a great shot. Now it's in the corner. They put it out in front. Over pass to Vasiliev, the good puck carrying defenseman, intercepted by Stapleton. Stapleton on the wing. Back out in front to Gordy Howe. Back to Stapleton. Tries to move in, and he slips and fell. The puck bounced loose. It's in the goal crease. And it's cleared out to the blue line. Vikulov, Vikulov, trying to get by Al Hamilton. And the shot was knocked off of his stick by Hamilton and slid harmlessly wide. 
This is back out of Senator Vasilia. Vasilia to Vicula. Vicula number 18 at the line. Works his way in. Knocked off his feet by Gordy Howe. And the play comes back out to Vasilia. Gordy Howe has been throwing his weight around so far in this game. Back comes Johnny McKenzie. McKenzie throws the pass to Paul Henderson. Henderson going in. Puck in front of the net. And Harrison couldn't get his shot away. He was too tightly tied up. McKenzie coming back with it. Racing out of center ice. This time is J.C. Trombley bumping in with Botnov. His shot is taken by Gusev. It's a 2 to nothing hockey game. 10.59 remaining in the opening period. Interception now by Johnny McKenzie. He's going up with Mark Howe. One man back. With Paul Henderson, the pass goes in front of the net. But Henderson was being held, and the uh, Trenchak came out to grab the loose puck. Soviets coming out to their own blue line. Gusev back over to the Canadian line as the pass went astray. And it's Ricky Lee. Ricky Lee on the fines over to Henderson. Henderson trying to get a shot. It's caught by Trenchak. He holds on for the whistle. Not only is this Russian club very, very alert, just look at this now. Look at this. Fact checker, come over here, take a McKenzie. Look at the city of how smart he is. He went to Henderson. This club is not only sharp offensively, but defensively, they're just something else. When one man goes to take another one, the other one looks around and sees where the danger point is. And that's their facility of some defense. Face off inside the Soviet zone to the right. There's Tardif. Great shot from the point. Right from the face off. And Trejak blocked that one. Here's Rick Smith trying to get another one away. And the Canadians now holding it inside the zone. With Rigahul fighting along the boards with Shatilov. And they get a whistle on the play. Soviets will make a change here. A lot of speculation of course a lot of words have been written about what happened in the last game here and a lot more will be said here's Bernier shooting and that hit the goalkeeper's shoulder pad and went right over the top of the net and out, out of the rink in the games in Canada everybody told us that our uh, we won the majority of face-offs I found it hard to believe but certainly in this game here we've had three good shots from winning the face-off the line's been making the face-off of Gusev trying to get him straightened out and now it's back inside the Soviet zone, picked off by Bernier. Bernier back to Schmier, to Rick Smith. Rick Smith over, and oh, and uh, Hull is pulled against the boards. Blake carries right on. Hull intercepts, tries to put it across, but it wouldn't go through. 9.49 remaining in this opening period with the Soviets leading 2 to nothing. Around the boards, bouncing it off the boards, but not out far enough was Mark Tardif, Harlamov. Can't get to it. Taken now by Bernier. Bernier left it there, but it's taken by Petrov. And it comes back at center. Big Vladimir Petrov, number 16. Big wide striding center. Drops the pass here for Harlamov. What a play. Look at Harlamov try to go through. And Rick Smith takes him out of the play. And Smith on the forward pass attempt failed on it and had to pin it against the boards to get a whistle. Johnny, you can see that cut pick and play coming all the way. Maltsev is just, or Petrov is fooling around, sort of lollygagging in the center right, and you see Harmanov spin around behind him. While Maltsev is going one way, Harmanov takes off like he's jet propelled. He lays it right on his stick, and he catches all our teams going at the same speed. So, this is a great play. off to the left of Jerry Cheevers. Shadron gets the draw. The puck is loose. It's in front of the goal. Taken off to the side by Stapleton. And Whitey Stapleton works his way over to the corner. Leaves it for Rick Smith. Or Rick Lee, rather. Back over to Hamilton, and they tried to feed that forward pass. That was so he, The Soviet player slips and falls, and uh, Tom Webster suddenly realized it would not be an icing call. Then he raced in after it. This is Andre Lacroix pumping in the corner with it. Yuri Lebedev. Lebedev is hit by Bobby Hall. The puck is held in by Pat Stapleton bouncing just wide of Trechak. Off the boards to Yakushev. Intercepted by Lacroix. Lacroix holding it in. 
Fighting for it along the boards, but Jakashev comes out with it to Lebedev. Lebedev, two on two, at the line. Cutting in front, but it's intercepted by Al Hamilton. Hamilton dumps it to center. Number 32, Yuri Churin, a newcomer. Has the puck inside his own zone. They're just throwing it around so they can get organized. See a little daylight. Now it's Lebedev over on the left wing. He's normally a left-handed shot playing right wing. Lebedev puts it back to the blue line, getting set. Here's a shot. Kicked out by Jerry Cheevers, and it goes over to Bobby Hull. Hull with Pat Stapleton. Back at the net, Lebedev takes a kick at it. Now it's held as uh, Stapleton takes it to the corner with Bobby Hall. There is just jamming it up. Nobody seems to be able to come out of there with it. Bill Stapleton gets hold of it and then just dumps it to center. Two to nothing, Soviet, 7.39, remaining in the opening period. Soviets are not in any rush to start any attack until they are in a good three-man position, as you see right there. Long pass intended for Maltsev. Is intercepted. Here goes Bobby Hall at the blue line, working his way in, back out in front, intended for Backstrom, and it was off the stick. Here comes uh, Wikulov. Wikulov in front. He shoots. Oh, and Jerry Cheevers had already made his move, and the puck slid off the stick and went in in slow motion. Back to the blue line. It's intercepted off the stick of a Soviet defenseman, Vasiliev, and then Hull kicks it. Gusev around the corner to Vasiliev. This is a great defense there for the Soviets. They even kick their passes around with authority. Intercepted by Backstrom. Backstrom in the corner to Gordy Howe. Howe has Bobby Hall in front of the net. Puts it right out in front. It's intercepted. They tie Howe up too tightly, too often for him to really be effective out there. Back comes Anissa kicking the puck forward. Then Gordy Howe ties him up. Maltsev back out to the line, but it's offside. As linesman Jim LeBlanc, Hamilton makes the call. I think these Russians are getting awful cocky. You see Anderson there just... Put the puck out, roll the toe of the stick over, pull it back onto his skate, and then kick it with his back foot up onto his skate. You often see these fellas do that in practice. It works once in a while, but oh boy, when you try that in international competition, you're sure of yourself. That's Mark Howe, stopped at his own line, hit by Sigankov, but they're called offside. Well, there was a lot of political playing back and forth between the various committees of hockey for Canada and for the Soviet Union, each making charges and counter charges about the other night's game. And I must say for the first time that I've heard of the Soviets chastising a Soviet official. Now we come back out to the center red line, picked up by Shadlov, this good young defenseman, number 21, a rink wide pass. He puts it right out in front to Kapustin. Kapustin getting by Ricky Lee. Lee then takes him to the corner. The pass is back to the blue line to Shadlov. Shadlov into the corner, waiting for it. Comes right back to him. Here's Shadlov. He shoots. That's deflected. And it goes into the corner. Soviets still have it, however, and Canada comes back. Led by Gordy Howe. Howe waiting for the wing. The pass over on that left side to Mark Howe, but it was too high. Mark Howe fighting for it along the boards. It's picked off by Baxter and by Lee. Lee turning over to Mark Howe. Howe works his way to the side of the net to Gordy Howe to Mark Howe. He shoots! And Trechak got a glove on it. Back out to the blue line comes Kapustin. Racing two on two. A rink white pass over on the right side to Kotov, number 29. He shoots and that hits the side of the net. Another shot there by Botanov is wide. That buck comes all the way out to center ice right with 5.13 remaining in the opening period. Sigankov at the blue line. Let the shot go. And Jerry Cheevers turns that aside, including the bouncing rebound. The Soviets are changing on the go as Canada races to center, led over there by Paul Henderson with Johnny McKenzie trying to get that in front. And McKenzie's turn around. He still has it. And the puck slid off his stick. It's a shot by Henderson. And he's robbed the game by Kutchak. Going for the top left-hand corner. Now watch this here. Henderson just doesn't get enough wood on it. Goes in behind the net, out to Henderson, and it's a flipping puck, but Trichet gets his hand up easily. Now it's Jimmy Harrison at center for Canada. The pass comes all the way down into Canadian territory. That'll be icing. Billy Harris has done some juggling. He has Johnny McKenzie out there on the forward line with Jimmy Harrison. And Paul Henderson, Bruce McGregor with the injured leg is not dressed, and Frank Mahovlich is out of the lineup tonight. 
Harrison. He's not ready for the draw, and the Soviet just simply pulled it away. Here comes Gusev, up for Luchenko. Luchenko at the blue line. Fires it off the boards, and going back in after it is 17, Rick Smith. Smith puts it around the corner, but Petrov picks it up. Petrov around the net again, is taken by Mihailov. Mihailov is bumped, and the puck bounces all the way down the ice. And this could be called, yes, this will be called for icing. Pretty good indication of why the Russians are coming out of their end fairly easy once they gain control of the puck. Is Luchenko had the puck behind the net. He's a big, strong, burly defenseman. But Harrison was right dead center with him, and he just shook him off like a big Newfoundland dog and take off a little carrier. And he burst up through center and made the pass, and they had a shot at our net. I think that uh, unless we really lean on these fellas, we've been doing that in our own end, but lean on them and don't let us let them out muscle us with a puck, we're going to get in trouble. Serge Bernier will go to center against number 19, uh, Vicula uh, Shadrin. And Shadrin has it. Shadrin at, his, at the Canadian line, trying to stick handle through the defense, but Bernier knocked it off his stick. Into the corner with Shadrin and Stapleton. Stapleton has it around the boards with Al Hamilton. Hamilton's long pass was intercepted. It's picked off now by Bernier. Bernier going in with Hull, and he couldn't slide it through. He almost lost his balance as he tried to make the pass. Here comes Yakushev down the left side, the big guy at the blue line. Sidesteps the body check, and then he's caught from behind by Mark Tardif. Tardif to Bernier. Bernier to Stapleton, to Tardif, to Stapleton, back over to Tardif. And they cannot make that play work. There comes Yakushev. Yakushev. He shoots, and that's wider than that. He's got a blazing wrist shot. Mark Tardif around the back of the net to Serge Bernier. Bernier up to the Canadian line, gets by Lebedev. The coming up to the Soviet blue line, tries to work his way through. And he's too tightly tied up. Trying to drop a pass there for Tardif. Back comes Lebedev. Lebedev is stopped. And the Canadians inside their own zone. Trying to work out of there with Raison Houle. Houle trying to break through, but the puck wouldn't come with him. Now it's all along the boards. And Hamilton knocks down Shadrin, takes a bump on the forehead as he goes. Here comes Houle, and he couldn't get away. We have two minutes and 50 seconds remaining in this first period. It's two to nothing for the Soviets as Lebedev races down the right side. Lebedev in the corner, turns with Tardiv on top of him. Taken by Maltsev. Maltsev with, uh, he's knocked down, still has the puck, however. Great stick handler, look at this. Puts it right in front of the net, and it's picked off by Canada. Back comes Andre Lacroix, but they're changing on the fly, and he's all alone. He shoots! That goes wide. Back of the net goes uh, Tom Webster. Webster out in front of Lacroix. In front, they shoot! Oh, score! Finally, Tom Webster! Puts the puck in the net on a beautiful play with 2.18 remaining in the period. Tom Webster. Fighting for the puck in the corner, Webster on the doorstep and tucked it in. But the Russians played four men. They played a man short on a chain for over a minute. And I was wondering when they were going to wake up. And with the score of the Soviets 2, Canada 1, this is game seven for Moscow. Good evening. So, how? What fiendish contraption have you devised to pit me against this time? The pendulum. The principal weapon in a game of deadly accuracy I call pendulum pull. Play. <laughs> Butt out. I win. Pay off, Poe. Seize him. Master, look. I no longer cook it. How can I ever thank you? Forget it. Pendulum pull by Aurora. We are experiencing picture difficulties as a result of satellite problems from Moscow. Please do not adjust your sets, as these picture and color difficulties are likely to continue for the duration of the game. From the face out, the Canadians come racing right down to Soviet territory. Shot goes wider than that. Andre Lacroix comes racing back for it. Malta picks it up with an Eason. An Eason over the line. He's turned around and is picked up by Bobby Hall. Canadians with new life on that goal. Try to feed that breakaway pass to Senator Harrison, but it wouldn't work. Now he's Shatilov at his own blue line. Shatilov over to Vikulov. Vikulov with Maltsev, and he is tied up. Maltsev takes a swing in Lacroix. Now it's center. Pass bouncing over the line, and Bobby Hull goes back in after it. Bobby Hull with Rick Lee. 
Looking for that pass. There it is to Bobby Hull, but it's a bouncer, and he can't get control. He's been having so much that, of that kind of trouble out here. At the blue line is Shatilov. Minute 14 remaining in the period. The puck comes out to center. It's held at the line. It's picked up now by Rick Lee, and then he loses it. Back come the Soviets, but the pass was too far. Bouncing off the boards, Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull off the glass with Gordy Howe. And it's knocked away by Mikula. With a minute to go, they're going in over the Canadian line. He shoots! And that's uh, knocked down by Jerry Cheevers. Gordy Howe has it. Beats it out to center ice to Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull with the man on his wing. It's Backstrom. Drop pass for Bobby Hull. He shoots! Oh, and Trutschak got his arm on that one. Gordy Howe takes it into the corner. Trying to put it out in front. And now there's... Gordy Howe losing his stick, tries to hold the Soviet player, but Sikhenkov gets away and is picked up inside the Canadian zone. This is Petrov. Petrov trying to get a shot, and it's at the blue line. Shatilov shoots. It's a bouncer. They're still jamming at it with 19 seconds to go in the period, and Jerry Cheever skates out to center ice. Almost. Here's a shot. He's out of the net. And back there to block it was Paul Smear with Gordy Howe. Wow, what a gamble that was by Jerry Cheevers. They wanted to try to get one breakaway started there before the period ended, but the buzzer sounds to end the period, and the old hearts are really thumping and pumping at this stage because of what Jerry Cheevers did and what, by what it almost cost, but a very smart recovery by Paul Smear and by Gordy Howe were back there to block an empty net. But the Canadians did get through life with that one goal, and uh, for Webster, that's his uh, second of the series. And uh, with the score, the Soviets 2, Canada 1. This is Game 7 from Moscow. Folks, you're watching Diane Warner. Uh, not only is she the best softball pitcher in all of Pine Grove, Ontario, but she's one of the very best in Canada. Diane, uh, you may be pretty good, but you only play against girls. Now, let me do a bet. You can't get one. Just, just one pass me. Did you bring a bat? Ready. All right, rookie, give me your best shot. I wasn't ready. Or I didn't see it. Same pitch again. Same play. Yeah, Diane. Diane. All I can say is it's a lot more fun having an O'Keefe with you, Diane, than it was playing ball against you. What I like about O'Keefe, it's an easy drinking ale. Well, you showed me, and grudgingly, here's to you, Dan. And here's to you, Paul. You're a great sport. And here's to you with O'Keefe. Don Chevrolet at our intermission studio here in Luznicki Ice Stadium in Moscow, and it's 2-1 to one after one period for the Soviet Union. Of course, the other night, the game that many fans are still talking about took place right here in the same rink. Certainly the most violent game of the entire series so far. One for the Soviets, 5-2. For his analysis of the action, let's go to Howie Meeker now. Goes into the Soviet end. These fellas go from defense to offense so quick. 
Watch number two, Gusev. Make the play up along the wing. They hit the man skating. And who gets it? The guy that had it all night long. Look at the stick work here. The puck went under his heel, or he would be home free. Just a tremendous play. All right, the puck goes into the Russian end again. Watch how the same fella, Gusev, pops it out along the board, jumps over his stick, and here he goes, 13 this time. Look at 17 again, and what a save by Cheever. Can't beat that, going for the top corner, makes a fantastic save. Looking in behind the net now, on Petra. Three Canadians, watch him take a stupid penalty. Look at that, no way. Here we're down, this is the penalty here. Watch the top of your screen, McGregor. Watch Basilia hit him. Wow, what a check, it's strictly legal. We're a man short. Five Soviets swing to the attack. Now again, the Soviets have the puck. Watch McGregor and Basilia. This is that went to the fighting penalty. Keep your eye on it. Right there, McGregor stick caught in his jersey. No way at all did McGregor fight back. He gets a five minute penalty. You know, up until this incident, it was a tremendous hockey game. From here on in, it was all downhill. Well, that illustrates there was some exciting hockey play despite all the violence in that previous game. And uh, it also points out the Soviets were deserving winners on the night. They deserve to be in front right now, but in shots on goal, they only have a one-shot edge, 11-10 after the first period here tonight. And after the first period, the score is Canada 1, the Soviets 2. This is Game 7 for Moscow. <laughs> 